Anytime you use neural networks, anytime you learn from data, form representation from data in an automated way, it's not very explainable as to, uh, or it's not introspective to us humans in terms of uh, how this neural network sees the world, where, why does it succeed so brilliantly on so many, in so many cases and fail so miserably in surprising yeah. ways and small. So what do you think is this, is, um, uh, the future there can simply more data, better data, more organized data solve that problem? Or is there elements of the symbolic systems that need to be brought in, which are a little bit more explainable? Yeah. So I prefer to talk about trust and uh, validation and verification rather than just about explainability. And then I think uh, explanations are one tool that you use towards those goals. And I think it is an important issue that uh, we don't want to use these systems unless we trust them and we want to understand where they work and where they don't work. And, and an explanation can be part of that, right? So I apply for a loan and I get uh, denied. Uh, I want some explanation of why. And uh, you have, uh, in Europe, we have the GDPR that says uh, you're required to be able to get that. But on the other hand, an explanation alone is not enough, right? So you know, we were used to dealing with people and with uh, organizations and corporations and so on, and they can give you an explanation, and you have no guarantee that that explanation relates to reality, right? Right. So the bank can tell me, well, you didn't get the loan because you didn't have enough collateral, and that may be true, or it may be true that they just didn't like my uh, religion or, or something else. Uh, I can't tell from the explanation, and that's, uh, that's true whether the decision was made by a computer or by a person. So I want more. I, I do want to have the explanations and I want to be able to uh, have a conversation to go back and forth mm -hmm. and said, well, you gave this explanation, but what about this? Mm -hmm. And what would have happened if this had happened? And uh, what, what would I need to change that? So I think a conversation is, is a better way to think about it than just uh, an explanation as a single output. Uh, and I think we need testing of various kinds. Right. So in order to know, was the decision really based on my collateral or was it based on my uh, religion or skin color or whatever, I can't tell if I'm only looking at my case. But if I look across all the cases, then I can detect a pattern. Right. right? So you want to have that kind of capability. Uh, you want to have these adversarial testing. Mm -hmm. Right. So we thought we were doing pretty good at uh, object recognition and, and images. We said, look. We're at sort of pretty close to human level performance on ImageNet and so on. Uh, and then you start seeing these adversarial images and you say, wait a minute, that part is nothing like human performance. Uh, yeah, you can mess with it really easily. You can mess with it really easily, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, you can do that to humans too, right? So In a different way, perhaps. Right. Humans yeah. don't know what color the dress was. Right. And so they're vulnerable to certain attacks that are different than the attacks on the, on the machines. But the, you know, the attacks on the machines are so striking, uh, they really change the way you think about what we've done, mm -hmm. right? And the, the way I think about it is, I think part of the problem is we're seduced by uh, our low dimensional metaphors. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, you look, like that phrase. <laughs> you look in, uh, in a textbook and you say, okay, now we've mapped out the space and, mm -hmm. you know, a uh, cat is here and dog is here. And maybe there's a tiny little spot in the middle yeah. where you can't tell the difference, but mostly we've got it all covered. And if you believe that metaphor, uh, then you say, well, we're nearly there. And, uh, you know, there's only going to be a couple adversarial images. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's the wrong metaphor. And what you should really say is it's not a 2D flat space that we've got mostly covered. It's a million dimension space and a uh, cat is this string that goes out in this crazy path. And yeah. if you step a little bit off the path in any direction, you're in nowhere's land and you don't know what's gonna happen. And so I think that's where we are. And uh, now we've got to deal with that. So uh, it wasn't so much an explanation, but it was an, an understanding of what the models are and what they're doing. And now we can start exploring, how do you fix that? Yeah, validating the robustness of the system and so on. but. Take it back to the this uh, this word trust. 
Uh, do you think we're a little too hard on our robots uh, in terms <laughs> of uh, the standards we apply? So, you know, of uh, th th there's a dance, there's a there's a there's a dance in nonverbal and verbal communication between humans. You know, th if we apply the same kind of standard in terms of humans, uh, you know, we trust each other pretty quickly. Uh, you know, you and I haven't met before, and there's some degree of trust, yeah. <laughs> right? That uh, nothing's going to go crazy wrong. And yet, to AI, when we look at AI systems, where we seem to approach uh, with skepticism, always, always, yeah. and it's like they have to prove through a lot of hard work that they're even worthy of our, even inkling of our trust. What do you What do you think about that? How How do we break that barrier? Close that gap? I think that's right. I think that's a big issue. Uh, just listening, uh, my friend uh, Mark Moffat is a naturalist, and he says uh, the most amazing thing about humans is that you can walk into a, a coffee shop or a, a busy street in a city, and there's lots of people around you that you've never met before, and you don't kill each other. <laughs> yeah. He says chimpanzees cannot do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. If a chimpanzee's in a situation where here's some uh, that aren't from my tribe, bad things happen. Especially in a coffee shop, there's delicious food around, you know. Yeah, yeah. But we, but we humans have figured that out, yeah. right? Uh, and, you know. For the most we, part. For the most part. We still go to war. We still do terrible things. Uh, but for the most part, we've learned to trust each other and, and live together. Uh, so that's going to be important for our uh, our AI systems as well. And I th also I think uh, you know a lot of the emphasis is on AI, uh, but in many cases uh, AI is part of the technology, but isn't really the main thing. So a lot of, of what we've seen is more due to communications technology mm -hmm. than AI te AI technology. Yeah, you want to make these good decisions. But the reason uh, we're able to have any kind of system at all is we've got the communication so that we're collecting the data and so that we can reach lots of people around the world. I think that's a, a bigger change that we're dealing with.